incredible. You, can you hear her whistle? I know. It's amazing. He went all the way out. He's just zigzagging the sheep in. Yeah. It's so cool. Charlie's next. <laughs> Sometimes I wake up with the sadness of the days It feels like madness What would I do without you? When colors turn to shades of gray with the weight of... People actually use the odds to place the bets. You think that's a better strategy than just picking a number and being overly confident? A decade goes by without a warning there's still a kindness in your eyes. Hi, it's so good Hi. to see you. I know. Amidst the questions and the worry, a peace of mind always takes me by surprise. All right, are we ready? Ready. Okay, big day today. Melvin is taking us to Keeneland. Which apparently is like the Wrigley Field of horse tracks. Mm -hmm. Ivy on the walls, very special. Yes, I cannot wait to yes. see it. And then after that, and we're gonna meet up with his trainer because he has a horse there, and we're gonna kind of get the inside scoop of like the process. We're gonna go out and see the horse jog. Okay, that's well, what it's called. Well, essentially, the, hor the horse trainer could tell us anything, and it would be news to us yes. because we know nothing. Yeah, that's right. And that's what this is. Yeah. It's an education. Yeah. Right. Okay. We're gonna let Melvin drive because that way, two reasons. One is he knows where he's going. That's a bonus. That's a bonus. And secondly, I might drone when we get up near the castle and some other areas, so kind of makes it handy. This is like the narrowest road we've ever been on. You're kidding me. No. Well, it's actually been widened. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I mean, with the dually, I've got to come over like almost in the gravel just to, and people go fast. That uh, a gentleman just wanted to build a castle. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Welcome to the action. This is amazing. We're at the stables. We're about to meet Street Danza. I can't wait. This is all very exciting. There's energy in the air. Notable or iconic racetracks. Yes. We've got Keeneland, of course, which is in Lexington and the horse capital of the United States. Very and cool. then there's Del Mar, which we've never been to, and it's right in San Diego. So I'm I surprised know. we've never done that. And then Saratoga in New York City, or New York. In New York. Those are the three iconic racetracks. Now you've mm -hmm. got the Derby, which is probably the most notable because of the horse race, but it's a lot like a party. Uh, it's because of the hats. It's the hats, it's the party, <laughs> it's the atmosphere. But the real race is here. It's gonna be the Breeders' Cup in Keeneland this year. Yes, there'll be tents stretched all the way down to the end. But the Derby is important too because it's one of the biggest purses of the year. Oh, There's a I lot see. of money to be won. Okay. And that's what brings out the fancy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, the whole thing is very cool. It's neat to be here and kind of get the behind the scenes. Good morning, it is 6.10. I'm just gonna come out here to stop this time lapse. Anyhow, so it's very early in the morning and we're headed up to go to the Stock Dog Trials, uh, Australian Shepherds and Border Collies and dogs of that nature, herding sheep for competition. It sounded pretty interesting to us. 
This is a seriously long course. Okay, so all the way around, and then has to maneuver the three sheep through three different sets of gates, bring them in through this little, do you see the little tiny hay piles? Yeah. You had to bring them in here. Now he's bringing them back through the last set of gates and coming back. I mean, somewhere out there that I would have been tired. I've been like, we're good. The sheep are good. <laughs> the dog keeps going. So what I really like, Trish, is that you are fitting in with your boots. Yes. Trish is wearing her Alaska boots. <clears throat> oh, I pulled those puppies right out this morning. And I knew. A lot of people are wearing boots here this morning, so yes. you're really fitting in. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I'm fitting in with the 450. <laughs> There's a lot of horses, you know a lot of dualies out here. You know who's not fitting in? What? Charlie. Charlie is not fitting in. <laughs> Charlie is not fitting Kinda in. Kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah, I think we should spray paint him little spots of black. <laughs> And be like, <clears throat> this is our border collie. This is our border right. collie. And he's next. <laughs> and uh, could you imagine if he went out there? <laughs> You'd just be sniffing around the pole. <laughs> it would be pretty funny, though. Yeah. All right, look, Charlie. Here's the thing. You don't want to expend too much energy when you first get going out there, all right? <laughs> okay? Hold some back. Because it's a long run. You see, Charlie, you're little, so they're going to underestimate you. Okay, but that's okay. Right. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to just whistle. I'm pretty sure picking <laughs> picking the dog up and walking is not allowed. Uh, this is where <laughs> the best sheep herding begins, right here. <laughs> right here. Yeah. You, have you learned anything? I have learned a lot. Really? I spoke with a handler's wife. Yes. And that's what she said. She says, I'm, I'm a handler's wife. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm a handler's husband. <laughs> what, what a coincidence, right? But my handler <laughs> needs a little work. Just a little <laughs> just work. Just a little work. <laughs> so let's talk about what's happening out here. First of all, I can't even believe how far the dogs run. She said, that's just innate to the breed. They just know to do that. And I said, well, how are things being scored? She says, the best score is 100. You're not going to see that very often. Mm -hmm. She says 90 would be a great score. Mm -hmm. She says it's based upon certain things like the dog is going to flank the field, yeah. go 12 o'clock behind the sheep and stop. And then the sheep, and then, and then the dog's not going to move unless if the sheep moves. That's kind of the, the standard, flow. that's the etiquette. Mm -hmm. The sheep are supposed to go on a somewhat of a relative straight line through the course. Okay. Yesterday they were going around the post right. Today they're going around the post left. So wow. the sheep herder has to be able to, or the handler, I'm sorry, the handler. Okay, this the handler's sheep. getting tired, hold okay. on. <laughs> I, say, I say sheep herder because I remember uh, Chevy Chase and Fletch. <laughs> what do you do for a living? I'm a sheep herder. Anyway. He said I'm a shepherd. I'm a shepherd, that's right. And what do you do for a living, Mr. Fletch? I'm a shepherd. The handler has to be able to tell the sheep where to go. When the sheep get into this circle with the hay, that's called, I think, the shedding circle, and they have to shed one off. So they have to get one sheep out of the circle yeah. before they bring it in. Okay, mm -hmm. Sunday, she says Sunday is the big day. Really? There's gonna be 20 sheep. The sheep have different colors. They're gonna bring down a group of sheep down here, and then it's called a look back. The dog has to go all the way back to where, you know, all the way over there and get the rest of them. And then they have to separate the sheep by the color of the their collar. Knows. The dog. Well, well, the. Oh. 
Yes. You know, and then they have to they have to separate the sheep by Whoa. color. Things are gonna get crazy on Sunday. They're gonna get real. I love listening to the handler mm -hmm. because they all have different whistles. I know, I know. And within that, yeah. the first like five whistles, you understand. Okay, that's stay. Yeah. Let's go left, left, left. Yeah. Let's go a little bit right. That's right. This one's come around. And Charlie was doing all of these things. And we're like, how do you know these <laughs> things, Charlie? You are so <laughs> smart. <laughs> We have a very biased mom here, a very biased mom. Oh yeah. Uh, I, my, my son is in the genius class. <laughs> He's very gifted. <laughs> One thing I didn't mention is that when the dog is done, another dog is already queued up from behind the fence to take the three sheep back. And the working dog mm -hmm. goes directly to a bin of water and plops down in it like at the spa. It's oh. kind of crazy to be around so many dogs that are so smart. Well, sure. I mean, you're, you know what that's like. <laughs> right? Yes. Charlie is Charlie. ahead of his class. Charlie, did you learn some things today? What did you learn today, Charlie? So I was thinking everybody could join me today making a very easy Instant Pot recipe. Yes. Sound like fun? I like it when you make anything. <laughs> That's an easy crowd, guys. Yeah, I am. Oh, he just wants to be fed like multiple times a day and we're good. <laughs> All right, so what are um, you making? So I'm gonna make these super easy pulled chicken, barbecue chicken wraps. Okay. And then um, you can eat them the same night, you can put them in the freezer, you can have them for lunch. It's like a staple item for us. And then because strawberries are in season, why not make like a strawberry spinach salad, almonds, that kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Sound good? Yes. So very easy, no brainer dinner. I thought I'd share it with you and you can make it however you like to make it. Sounds good. But we have a bigger issue. Yes, we do have a bigger issue. We found out, actually on the last episode when we were editing, that our mic broke. This, well, I don't think, I think the Canon connection to the mic is loose. Come over here, Trish, and let, let me show everybody. The Canon is where it and it's a beautiful track. And about half of our footage from this episode sounds exactly like that. I dropped my 60, beloved Canon 60 Mark II at Churchill Downs. I set it down on this chair. I didn't realize the chair flew back and I dropped it. Initially, I was kind of devastated that I could potentially have broken a very expensive camera. Turned out to be a silver lining because at that point, I thought because I dropped the camera, I thought that's when the mic broke. Turns out the mic was already broken and by dropping the camera, it clued me in to figure out that it was broken. Had I not dropped the camera, the next two, three, or four episodes could have been corrupted. What Trish is holding right now is a Canon EOS R with another mic, and the 60 Mark II is now a backup camera, and I'm sending it into Canon to go get fixed. This needs to get fixed. The LCD screen needs to get fixed. The fact is we've been operating these cameras for every single day for years, and they need some service. So, anyhow, the bigger problem here is that we lost so much great footage from Kentucky. While Trish shares this recipe with you, we're gonna bring you up to speed on all the stuff that we have video and not audio of, like our 20th year wedding anniversary. Yes, that was a super fun time. Yes, and then we also went to Churchill Downs where I dropped the camera. <laughs> and all the upgrades we did while you were in Phoenix. Yes. I did some upgrades that I wanted to share with you. So let me flip this camera around. What's the first step? Break out your Instapot. And if you don't have an Instapot, don't worry. You could make this in the oven, on the stove. You could um, smoke it or grill it outside. However you want to shred your chicken. I store my Instapot with the little cord inside. And some people have little, uh, you know, different apparatuses, a steamer, a little plate, things like that. You, you could keep it all in here and keep it closed. And that way you, are only dealing with one thing. So this is how I always have it stored. And then the other way to add flavor, there's a couple things about the Instapot. Most of you probably know everything there is to know about the Instapot and way more than I do. So these are just a couple things that I've learned. 
Number one, when you sear the meat first, you add so much more flavor. So that means turn it on, put a little oil in, hit the sear button. I think it's actually called, oh, it's called saute on mine. And then you saute the meat, you get it kind of brown on both sides. And then the other thing is you need a lot of flavor because by the time whatever meat is in there comes out on the other end, sometimes it could be bland. So either up the salt a little bit or up the flavor. I like to just use sauces. And for today, I'm gonna to use this sugar-free sauce. It is sugar-free, gluten-free, two carbs per serving, and it's like really tasty. It doesn't taste bad or anything, because <laughs> usually sugar-free. Mm. So um, I do this to add a bunch of flavor without a bunch of sugar. And then I take a barbecue sauce where I really like the flavor, like a hot and smoky with a little bit of brown sugar, and I use this at the end, so you're only using a little bit. So if you're gonna do something with sugar, use it at the end of the meal instead of the beginning. Avocado oil, I love it. You can do things at high temperatures with it and it doesn't give your food a taste. It's just clean and nice and it's a quality oil. So I'm gonna use this and um, we're gonna saute the meat before we get it started. That'll just kind of give a nice browning flavor to you know, the finished product. It's slight, you could just throw it all in and throw your barbecue sauce on, click the top and be done. If you wanna do that, nobody's watching and it'll probably taste just as good. <laughs> but for me, I just really like to do this step. Okay, so while Trish is doing this, you wanna mm -hmm. talk, you wanna share with everybody about my little surprise for our 20th year wedding anniversary? Oh, that you brought the dog to come pick me up? Yeah. Trish goes off to Phoenix because she had some things that she had to take care of in Phoenix. Yes. And so you were there for what, four or five days? Yeah. And, and when, I got to say hi to Victoria, she's doing really well. Yes, and so when I picked Trish up the, the Louisville airport, mm -hmm. I brought Charlie with me. Now she knew we were going out to dinner for our 20th year wedding anniversary. Yes. And uh, so she was a little surprised to see Charlie, but I did that just to make sure that she was excited when I picked you up. That was a little trick of mine. And little it worked. trick. I would be excited just to see you, Mark. But just to be sure, I brought Charlie. Anyhow. That's very funny. So uh, we have some insiders that, uh, Jeff and Connie, that are owners of the Galt Hotel in Louisville. And they invited yes. us out to the hotel, which was great. And they, I said, hey, can we bring Charlie? And they said, no problem. <laughs> well, they had an area that's like, yeah, like long-term long -term apartment kind of stuff. stuff. Yeah. So I don't think the hotel is that's necessarily. True. Yes, that's yeah. true. But we're very grateful that we were able to bring Charlie. Yes. And so Trish and I ended up sneaking away and having a staycation out of town. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. It a lot was. Of fun. And the, the room was absolutely beautiful and it overlooked the river with all the yeah. bridges and the barges. Yeah. And Charlie did great. He Going. really did. He, he was totally metropolitan. Yes. He was like, yeah, I do yes. hotels, no problem. Yes. So happy anniversary. Yes, it was great. And then it was our 20th, and so Mark got me this beautiful watch. Well, I made you a keychain yes. with a quarter from the year we were married. Yes. Totally and we sat not, not at the same price value. I, I won. I but won. But yes, you won in that, but mine was very <laughs> sentimental. Very sentimental. <laughs> and we sat down on the couch in the hotel, and we shared all this with you, but there's no audio. No. <laughs> Feeling around in here. It's getting warm. Hit that saute button, you let your oil come up to. You don't want to get a hot pan and then throw hot oil on it. I like using chicken thighs. I feel like there's oh, nice, way more flavor. But if you're on like a super no fat kind of situation, you can always use chicken breast. That would work. Anyway, you do what works for you. I'm going to throw a little salt on there. little pepper but you want to think of like salt and pepper and browning these are all layers to the flavor and it makes things pop so we're gonna flip these around that is simmering let's make a quick salad and I want to show you just how easy it is to make something super quick um the best part about summer is the fact that all of the produce is so in season it's absolutely gorgeous Remember to wash your strawberries though because they're known to be some of the dirtiest fruits there are. And you can see it for yourself when you wash them off like this and then you let them float up. You kind of give them a little bath. When you're doing your strawberries, instead of cutting them off across the top, you just scoop them around and get all the white that's under the stem because that's the most bitter part of the strawberry. So you just go in at an angle and you get like a little cone. And you see all that white? That's the bitter part. The best part about being the cook is you get to find the very best ones. Look how deep red that is. Mm. You can eat them. Here you want half, babe? Oh, thanks. 
Oh, that is. That's like a strawberry shortcake. I know. That is delicious. I love summer. The best fruits and vegetables. So anyway, okay, so we're making um, just a little strawberry with almond and goat cheese. The lettuce is already pre-rinsed. You rinse off the strawberries. I'll show you how to get to the bottom of making good goat cheese over your salad because sometimes that could be a little baby disaster. And then we could make a dressing, but today is all about easy. So when you're at a farmer's market or a fruit stand, look for dressings because they're delicious. They're like usually a long time family recipe. And then you can get creative from there so you don't have to do so much work. So we could make a poppy seed dressing, but today, because I found this really great place, Vidalia um, onion and peppercorn dressing. Yum. So we're gonna use that. I like to do layers with the Instapot, just like layer in the meat, do a little bit of sauce. I'm gonna use the whole entire sauce. And then put in the, put in these next. And then the juices from the chicken and the sauce are all gonna blend together while it's pressurizing. And then we're going to shred it. It'll be so good. So let's see, here's the lid. Let's throw this guy on, close it. Close it so the steam gets trapped in there. So this would be letting the steam out and this traps the steam in. The pressure cook. We only need about 25 minutes. And then it will automatically start. And that time will start once that, once it's pressurized. While well, Trisha's cutting the rest of these strawberries, we're gonna tell you about our Churchill Downs experience. We went for the twilight races. I think it was a Thursday night. Yes. How much did it cost to get in? Five dollars Five dollars. Yes, five dollars each. I think the boys and I spent like $10 $2 bets just betting for the win on a bunch of random horses. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I think you got a mint julep that you wanted. I did. I, I had to taste a mint julep and it was strong. It they was don't strong. hold back. We even bought the souvenir cups. We were all in. We were all in. <laughs> it was awesome. And then there was food trucks all along. So I would say, I mean, of course, it's not going to the Kentucky Derby. No. But it's also not spending thousands of it's dollars. It's also really cheap and it was a lot of fun. There were food trucks and we had dinner and you got the, like, I think they did like 10 or 15 races. Oh, yeah. Crazy. I'm going to go do one because they're three to one. Graceful Princess? Yeah, Graceful Princess. And what's number four? Number four is Urban, urban Insect. insect. Mm. He, he was urban. Keeper Daydream would actually be a pretty good horse. It would. That would be a good day. <laughs> How much do you think it costs to like have one of these? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> no big deal at all. No big deal at all. Maybe we should talk to Melvin about, yes. about boarding Keeper Daydream. <laughs> Goat cheese can sometimes be a mystery. <laughs> How do you open it? How do you use it? Do you slice it? Do you crumble it? Do you use your fingers? It's usually in a nice little package like that. And if you open it all the way with the idea that you're gonna put it back in like a baggie or a plastic container, you get a fork and you just lightly run it over the top and then it comes out with perfect little crumbles. It takes a sec, but you just kind of go like this, however much you like. This is the easiest way because your hands do not get dirty. So then you just put the top on and then you can put it right into a baggie or a plastic container and it makes life super easy. You store it again, you take off the top, you crumble it again. And that way it stays nice and moist and you're not like getting it all over your fingers. Easy peasy. So that and then just some almonds. Some slivered almonds, sliced almonds, whatever kind of almonds you like. Lightly salted. I just like these guys because I think they're pretty. You could also add a little bit of red onion. Super tiny slices or um, minced, but I say why go through that? We're trying to do it really easy tonight. So minimal cleanup, it's not hot. It's, we're not getting any extra things dirty that we don't need to. So that's it. I have that, I have a pre-made dressing, and then I'm gonna show you how to take that meat once it's done, shred it, roll it up into these tortillas, and then package them. You can, I, if you're going to cook, do not cook for just one meal. Make sure that you either cook extra chicken so you can use it in a salad the next day, or with these, they're amazing because you just roll them up, you put them in a baggie, and you throw them in your freezer. Right now, we don't have a working freezer. Or but a fridge. Or a fridge, we're working out of the Dometic, so I'm not making tons of extra things, but these will go fast in your house, I promise. Okay, quick update on the upgrades. I took 
the opportunity while Trish was out of town to take care of some stuff. Well, first of all, we had an address. So thank you, Melvin and Lexi, for letting us mail things to your place. And stay at your place for so long. Exactly. Thank but you so much. We ended up sending, uh, we ended up having two RV locks sent here and Carson and I put them in. So good to have the RV lock back. When we were, I think we were a month or so just working with the keys and who's got the key. We're always the key. managing the key could potentially lock ourselves out. So having the RV locks back is fantastic. And then I found yes. where to get those canvas pocket shoe things that My everybody loves so much. Things ever. They're the best ever. They come with really like a big hardware. And I Wrong. found them like a big grommet, yeah. It's a grommet. On Overton's. Overton's? Yeah, Overton's. So I'm going to link down below because everybody loves these things. Not sponsored, not an affiliate link, anything. It's just we just want to be helpful. We had them on our last ring and everybody said, where'd you get those? Yes. In person. I don't know. So then mm -hmm. you found them online. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, so go check that out. Still a long list of little upgrades, but we're starting to we're starting to tackle it. And once we get all these little upgrades done and some of the bigger upgrades and we get it, this place organized because you've been doing a good job, but we're still not there yet, RV tour time. Oh, it's coming. Yeah. It's coming and I'm very excited about it. All right. We getting close to the dinner? We are getting close. Let's chat about the people out there that are either trying to do a low glycemic, gluten-free, um, low inflammation type diet. Mm -hmm. um, we can, we, have... can, we, can we talk with me not holding it with this arm? Yes. Siete. These things are awesome. They're almond flour and they're gluten-free, paleo, non-GMO, dairy-free, soy-free, vegan. So you can have taco night. You could do these pulled chickens, you could do pulled pork, all kinds of stuff. So, because sometimes corn tortillas, I love corn tortillas, especially if you salt them, that's the trick. Yes. Um, they can be a little dry, some people don't like them, but these are the closest thing I've found to flour. Mm -hmm. So, but we still have flour because Carson, Carson. loves flour. We are gonna see if this all turned out. There's. Look at that. Oh, look at this. It just pulls apart like crazy easy. Think of your cheese as the glue. And um, I'm using pepper jack here. But what you want to do is put some on the edge. Not a ton, but put it on the edge and then stack your meat over here. I'll show you. Here's the side without the cheese. And use that in here. And then tighten it up and then roll over the cheese and that will be your glue. So when it gets hot, it all melts together really nice. And then, um, like this. Over like that. Boom. And then you, they're ready to go in the freezer and then you can pop them out and throw them on the stove or you can, when the, your Instapot is all nice and cleaned out, you can put them back in here inside their foil and then put keep warm and then warm them all up and then people can just pull them out all wrapped up like that. So you can make these way ahead of time ahead. and then have a whole bunch of people come over mm -hmm. and they're just ready to go. Yeah, and then you unwrap them and they can be eaten like in your lap outside mm -hmm. or you could take them totally out and cut them like diagonal and make them look nice for a little dollop of sour cream but we're not getting fancy again this no. is like super fun but we are getting the chalua easy fast you can get chalua or you can get a barbecue sauce or um hot sauce carson likes hot sauce gotcha so that's it okay well there you have it that's it for this episode a little cooking a little churchill downs a little anniversary stuff what else? Oh, dog, the stock trials. If you like the video, give oh it a thumbs gosh. up. We, we forget to remind the KYD community as a whole to click thumbs up enough. It actually helps. It does. It does so something to the algorithm. It. So we do appreciate it. Thank if you, you. feel like you're part of the community and you dig the vids, then give it a thumbs up. And otherwise, uh, next weekend, we uh, are going to pack up here and then head down to Gatlinburg. Pigeon yes, Forge area, Pigeon Smoky Forge. Mountains, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. I can't wait to go hike through that. Yeah. So... More to come. That's it for now. Glad you're here. See you next Sunday. What would I do without you? You got your sunshine, I got rain clouds, you got hope, I got my doubts. So, what would I do without you? Oh, what would I do without you? Oh, what would I do without you?